So in this segment, we're going to be talking about um, Sinn Féin politicians talking about how Brexit was effectively a catalyst for a border poll and a united Ireland. And that's just crazy to me, um, considering that's not what Brexit was really about or what it aimed to do. But a side effect of it is um, pushing Northern Ireland closer to a united Ireland, which I'm sure, you know, the unionists are very, very happy about that. You know, they vote, uh, the vote that they made for Brexit has helped uh, get rid of their obsession with the union. Um, for a referendum, a border poll, uh, tomorrow morning or indeed you know, next year, because that just repeats the reckless mistakes. Of but that Brexit. is something you want to see in the future. Oh. So he's saying like, a border poll is not going to happen tomorrow or anytime soon. It's going to be a while and there's certain steps they have to take in order to get this done. Well, yes, of course it is, uh, and we've been very clear on this. We want to see the conversation which has already taken place. The fact that you're asking the question is proof of that. I think people want to know what a New Ireland looks like. Uh, I think people want to see that, um, that conversation informed, and that's why we have called on the Irish government to convene the Citizens' Assembly, which will do just that. Um, we have called on the British government to clarify that term in the Good Friday Agreement as to what would actually trigger um, such... That's, that's a good question as well, because I don't think it's very... Uh, there's no real hard rules about what would trigger a border power. I think it's mainly up to the uh, Northern Ireland Secretary, would be Brandon Lewis in this case. What would he need to look at? Opinion polls or what? what's the threshold? for triggering a border poll or you know, starting that process. Um, they've talked about citizens' um, communities, I think he said, where you know, essentially citizens' assemblies where people get together and they talk about what, what are the you know, issues or what are the pros and cons of um, United Ireland, for example, or, you know, it's kind of their concerns about how would it work for unionists, etc. Referendums on this island, because no matter where you are, as you've referenced on, on the decision, on the question, you might be for, you might be against, or you might be somewhere in between. You need to know what it is you're voting for. You need to know what it is you're, you're voting against. And I think that one thing that is clear, well, two, actually, I think there is a border poll coming at some stage. Um, and I also think that Brexit has been a huge catalyst for what could potentially be the breakup of the Union the United Kingdom as we currently see it. It's okay. advanced that conversation have to be in really Scotland. Because we've and, only got five minutes left and I need to get and, the rest and of the on this island, I'll, I'll be very quick as a finish. On this island, it is about how you phrased it. It's a new Ireland. It's not about rubbing a line out of a map. It's a new Ireland okay. where all of the protections of the Good Friday Agreement are there no matter what your position and no matter whether you're British, Irish or okay. neither. Now, that's important, you know, that the you know the Good Friday Agreement still stands that, you know, there is still equality between unionists and nationalists, that it doesn't, you know, give a, you know, carte blanche to um, nationalists to do what they want to unionists, similar to how, you know, how it was before, where it was flipped. It was flipped where, you know, you had uh, stories about how um, unionists would, you know, bully um, Irish nationalists or just people um, from Ireland in general who didn't have that, I think, that historic British link. Um, so, you know, obviously you want to see an island of equality and, you know, we're in uh, the modern era now, I guess we would describe it, you know, it's not the idea of colonialism in the past. And I hope that the protections of the Good Friday Agreement still exist in a united island, that people will still be treated equally and, you know, unionist concerns will still be taken into account, um, despite the fact that there is a national, um, um, a, what do you call it, a unified island. It's not about, as he said, just rubbing out a border. Um, it's about more than that. It's about, you know, integrating um, one community into another, essentially. And I don't know how difficult that is. Um, citizens' assemblies will be important. There'll be a lot of international support, I think, behind a United Ireland or, you know, just behind this kind of these conversations. I'm sure the Americans, um, the EU Commission and so many other kind of different nation and different nations and set, et cetera, will get involved in this one and try and help out as best they can. Because let's not forget the Good Friday Agreement was an international effort. And he makes a lot of good points here in um, this kind of short minute and 30 seconds that Brexit was a catalyst for United Ireland. Sure. But it's not about, you know, that kind of really ugly side of nationalism that we've seen in England. And when the referendum comes, they need to be very clear about what's going to happen. Because in England, you know, we in Britain, we saw what happens when you have a very dubious referendum. It ends badly, you know, compared to the promise of, oh, we'll be in the single market and customs union. We'll have absolute free access to the EU, but also we'll have trade deals with other countries. That was never going to happen. So, you know, they need to be very clear. And uh, maybe it's got to be coded into law. What will happen if there's a United Ireland, for example? Um, how would it all work? Because, you know, we've seen it with the Brexit referendum. It ended badly. The things that were promised were not given to us. And that cannot happen here, I think, in, in, in Northern Ireland, where, um, you know, a, a community, an area in the world, I'm going to be a bit careful here, I'll try to, um, an area where, you know, 
the past was very toxic. It's not long ago that there were violence. There was violence in Northern Ireland. Um, the Good Friday Agreement is younger than me, um, which is a bit scary to be honest. It shows I'm getting old, but it's a situation where you want you want people who have really thought about the outcomes of United Ireland. And you want them to really think about how it's going to look and how we're going to get to a point where people can live happily together um, rather than be, you know, constantly at each other's throats and you have unionists and, and um, nationalists fighting each other and things like that. No one wants to see that. At least I don't. Um, but anyways, look, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.